Number six, it is being projected that the radioactivity off coastal waters off the U.S. West Coast could double over the next five to six years. I'll bet sooner. I think that's being pretty generous. Yeah, yeah. I, I think it's going to happen sooner, that's and there's a, many different things that need to be taken into account how much radioactivity might be carried from this debris. Much of it is porous cloth and styrofoam and wood that's going to collect particles that have been raining out over the past two and a half years. And then we also have a situation of uranium buckyballs and now the newest finding, cesium buckyballs. That was just reported today. Loren can explain a little bit more about that, but we don't know how those things travel in the ocean waters. Yes, uh, scientists are reporting that spheres of radioactive material from Fukushima are being reported for the first time. Ball-like particles composed of cesium, iron, zinc, solid and insoluble in water, impact on human health needs to be examined. What they're talking about are nanoparticles, and they are produced, these spherical particles, um, I know all about this because uh, depleted uranium is just like this. And this indicates, since these are being reported now, very recently, as a new phenomenon, it means that the fuel rods are burning in Fukushima at extremely high temperatures. It means there's no water in the pools or some of the pools. And what happens at these very high temperatures is that they're so high, the burning fuel rods uh, it release a, a, a gas, a very hot gas, that condenses and collects as a spherical uh, radioactive particle uh, when the, uh, the very hot gas begins to chill. That indicates that Fukushima fuel rods are definitely burning at extremely high temperatures and that was not reported right after the Fukushima earthquake and tsunami. So that place is going in flames and releasing extremely radioactive, very, very dangerous spherical nanoparticles of mixed radioactive isotopes. And um, those tiny spheres are extremely dangerous because they have a... Um, an effect called the particulate effect. They are uh, uh, they actually change chemicals and interfere with cell processes um, that are life threatening and cause very high rates of various illnesses caused by ionizing radiation. But there is our proof right there that Fukushima is on fire. Unbelievable. I, I have a question. Loren, have you ever heard of this type of nanoparticle before in a reactor accident? No. Uh, but I, I, I hadn't either. No, I haven't either, but, but it's definitely um, a characteristic of depleted uranium, uh, you know, from the battlefield. Uh, uranium is a pyrophoric metal. It catches on fire very, very easily, and it burns at temperatures up to 5,000 degrees centigrade, which is hotter than the sun. So these tiny particles are the most lethal part of the, um, of the, the danger of a nuclear power plant burning or using depleted uranium weapons. And, of course, we know at Fukushima that they have MOX fuel in one of the reactors that's mixing plutonium and uranium in the fuel, and it's very unstable, and it, it burns at very high temperatures, and, of course, uh, plutonium is extremely lethal to uh, living uh, organisms. Number seven, experts have found very high levels of cesium-137 in plankton living in the waters of the Pacific Ocean between Hawaii and the West Coast. Oh, that isn't normal, huh? Well, you know, they detected two weeks after the accident already very high levels in the kelp off BC. 
And that at that time it was iodine one thirty one, I believe, which after forty days dissipates, but one twenty nine sticks around for much, much longer. Um, I have an article called The Bioaccumulation of Contamination in Plankton. This is from the U.S. Armed Forces in 1955. Plankton concentrate mineral elements from the water, and it has been found that radioactivity may be concentrated in this manner by as much as a thousand times. Thus, for example, one gram of plankton could contain a thousand times as much radioactivity as a gram of water adjacent to it. Unreal. And I believe we know even more now than we did back then, but I mean, this, this is bad news for anything in the ocean that lives on plankton, which is everything, but things it's, that feed directly on it, like whales, well, for it's instance. The base, it, it's the base of the food chain, and... Uh, what we know is about bioaccumulation in seaweed is that seaweed bioconcentrates ionizing radiation in the seawater to 150,000 times higher uh, levels in seaweed than in the water the seaweed is living in. Unbelievable. So number um, eight. Eight is one test in California found that 15 out of 15 bluefin tuna were contaminated with radiation from Fukushima. That was just about a year ago when uh, tuna off the coast of San Diego were sampled, and I think all of them, all of them had cesium in the the flesh, and these tuna had come from Japan, which is where they spawn offshore from Fukushima. Yeah, number nine ties into that, too. Back in um, 2012, the Vancouver Sun reported cesium-137 being found in a very high percentage of the fish that Japan was selling to Canada. 73% of the mackerel <coughs> tested, 91% of the halibut, 92% of the sardines. Of course, now the sardines from here have disappeared. 93% of the tuna and eel. 94% of the cod and anchovies, and 100% of the carp, seaweed, shark, and monkfish. 100%. 100%, and that is because uh, the levels in these different uh, fish uh, depend on their diet. So fish that prey on other fish uh, usually have lower levels than fish that feed on uh, plankton, for instance, or their bottom feeders, and they pick up um, mud and small particles which have higher levels of radiation because of the, uh, the chemical affinity that um, tiny particles have for radiation. In other words, very tiny clay particles in, the, uh, in water are, uh, new, they are scavengers for uh, highly charged radioactive particles. Ten, Canadian authorities are finding extremely high levels of nuclear radiation in certain fish samples. And that's uh, some fish samples they tested have very high levels of radiation. One sea bass sample collected in July, for example, had a 1,000 becquerels. That means disintegrations per second per kilogram of cesium. Now, the terrible thing is about cesium is that it affects the heart. It, 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 it is collected in the heart, and uh, the heart reprodu uh, it produces new cells only about 5% per year. So we're seeing athletes, racehorses, celebrities during performance, pilots while they're flying are collapsing. They're dying of heart attacks or cardiac failure, and uh, this is being very widely reported in the U.S. and uh, Alaska flight crews, and also in England, in football players, racehorses, it's, um, that's the cesium damage. Now, what people don't realize is that uh, nearly 2,000 radioactive isotopes are produced in a fissioning process. And that's what's coming out of burning uh, and coming out of the uh, the fuel rods. So you have to you have to multiply that that the danger of the cesium they're reporting by uh, 
uh, almost 2,000 other isotopes, we're getting absolutely bombarded. If I pick up on number 11, you know, people developing cancer from eating contaminated fish, what I'm stunned by this is that it seems to be having such a rapid effect. I mean, here we have this Daniel Hirsch, a nuclear policy lecturer at UC Santa Cruz, who's telling Global Security Newswire, we could have large numbers of cancer from ingestion of fish, and I take it they're already showing up. It's already showing up. I mean, how, yeah, how tell- quickly... You, you know, it's just astonishing that it should be that fast. Well, you know, part of, part of the the problem too is that if you when you look back at Chernobyl in Japan, they're saying right now all these kids that they're finding thyroid problems with, you know, they they're developing nodules. Some of them have early cancer. The experts are saying, wow, well, this can't be from Fukushima because it's happening too fast. Because in Chernobyl, it took four or five years for a hundred kids to have cancer. Well, it's and, these. It's these very tiny particles, and it's uh, constant exposure now for two years, more than two years. And uh, Fukushima, I'm, I'm sorry, um, Chernobyl was just one exposure, and they put the lid on it, they put a sarcophagus on it and stopped it. This is constant daily, 24-hour-a-day releases of, of low-level and not-so-low-level radiation. And by April of 2011, just two months after Fukushima, air samples and um, air filters in cars were analyzed by Dr. Chris Busby. And he calculated that by April, uh, the radiation concentrations in the air in Japan around the Fukushima area um, dem- um indicated that the equivalent of 300 Chernobyls had occurred. We're talking now, from this new evidence about spherical particles, we're talking about all those fuel rods or large numbers of fuel rods in the, in the cooling pools that are now empty um, are releasing huge new amounts of extremely toxic sphericals. So uh, it's really... It's really bad, and uh, a new study by the Food Lab and Radiation Food Lab, I believe it's in Japan, um, it, they reported that uh, the, the 19th of October, 2013, that uh, Pacific Coast seaweed is contaminated with cesium and that the levels uh, are um, 8.14. For becquerels per kilo for cesium-134, uh, 8.88 becquerels, for becquerels per kilo for cesium-137, and cobalt is even being reported in seaweed off the Pacific coast of the, of the U.S. Um, at 3.7 becquerels per kilo. In Chiba, which is north, it's between Tokyo um, and... Um, Fukushima, the cesium levels were 41 um, becquerels per kilo for for cesium-134, 63 becquerels per kilo for cesium-137, although no cobalt-60 was detected. But um, Mm. there's nothing to compare this to. You can't even compare it to Chernobyl. It's the uh, the fuel the the spent fuel rods did not burn at Chernobyl. It was just the reactor rods, and they stopped it right away. But these people in Japan are releasing; they're guaranteeing, they're facilitating increased releases of extremely high levels of radiation on a daily basis into the atmosphere and into the ocean, and of course. Contaminated air masses are over here along the, the Pacific coastline in a matter of days. 